Hi stamping friends, it's Terry Gaines. In this video, I'm going to share a five by seven fun fold window card with you that I embellished with the Cottage Rose Bundle, which is part of the Abigail Rose collection in Stampin' Up's 2022-2023 annual catalog. I absolutely love these floral images to color in with blends. And what I like to do is just pick up a flower color and a green color that goes with it and color in. So I'm going to show you how I color in the, with the blends also. And as you can note, there's two different styles. I have one style of my card that I use this window cut out, and the other I use floral images to decorate. I'm going to show you details on both of those. We're going to start out by creating the window in our card front. The card base is 10 by 10 by 7 folded in half or scored at five and folded in half. We want to cut a window out of this front panel. I'm going to use the new deckled rectangle dies in the annual catalog and cut out just the front panel. As you can see, I have a mark on my die. I took a black Sharpie and put a mark on there, but just a note, the black Sharpie does transfer to your cardstock. So I put a piece of scotch tape over it to help and um, so it doesn't transfer. We want the window just out of the front. So to do that and fit through the die cutting machine, we're going to fold the back over the front. So the magnetic platform form works great to hold everything in place. So I have my cut and emboss machine set up here. This is the front of the card. I'm going to place this die so it is centered on my card, equal spacing on top and bottom, equal on the two sides. And if you are using a different die or a different image, you can move it up and have something decorating the bottom. In this sample, I'm just going to keep it right in the center, equal spacing top and bottom, equal spacing side. Bring the back over it, put the platform down on top of that, and then run this through the cut and emboss machine, and it will create that window. And that's going to... Um, now we have our window cut and part of the instructions and I'll just share a couple things as it does make an indentation in the back but that's the back of the card and nobody's going to really comment on that and then we do need this opening to reserve this or cut one out of a different color I'm going to cut one out of the basic white so I'm going to put the basic white down and cut out the very same image and so I'm going to place that down but I'm also going to use this sample by creating out the window at the very same time, the decorative, let me rephrase that, the decorative image. Um, it's the one that creates this image here. So I'm going to put that in at the very same time because it does fit inside the largest of this. And note that the, my mark is up here. That means I have to, it helps me identify the orientation for my flowers because they need to match up to fit back into that, to that opening. So now I can run these through. Now it's going to cut out lots of images here and I'm going to save all of them because um, you can use those for your card decorating. And they also are part of the, the die cut for these four flowers are from that die. So I'm just gonna bring in a plate over here. We don't need that outside piece. We wanna reserve all of these images. So I'm just gonna bring a paper plate in and bring those all um, into my, or put those all into the plate here. So the other thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna just put all of those on the plate. I'm going to get just this piece and I wanna decorate this piece by using the time-worn type embossing folder. And just to let you know that the Stampin' Up! logo is the top. So if you have your cardstock right way up, that means that your embossed image will emboss um, with the right side on the right, the right side on the right side. Oops, I need the different platforms. You need the gray one for your 3D folders and I'm going to run this through. So what I like to do is cut out a lot of these flowers and just get my machine out and do all my machine work ahead of time. So there's a couple other dies that I'm going to be using. I would cut out a bunch of these all blank because I'm going to use the Stamparatus to, to 
um, color them in or ink them on the blank one. So I think I'm done with the cut in boss machine and we can move on to working with the Stamparatus. I am gonna bring in both of those. Um, so I have this card front and then I'm going to show you both at the same time because I have two different styles. So this one was cut in embossed. That's going to be one card. And ahead of time, what I did was I cut the smaller next size down frame out of basic white, ran it through the embossing folder, and that's going to be embellishing the second card. So I did a little bit of prep work ahead of time. So we're done with the die cuts. And as I mentioned, we're going to be moving on to the um stamparatus and inking up these blank images so let me bring the plate back in we need this larger flower we want the three flowers right here which would be this is one of them this is another one and this is the third one so i'm going to just keep those other pieces set aside and I'm going to bring this over just in case I need that again. So onto the Stamparatus. So what I like to do um, is set up a Stamparatus. You get two of these removable plates. I like putting a stamp set underneath to keep that level. I like adding a sheet of the small grid paper. That's an add-on. And then on the bottom, you have your two magnets. You want to keep them apart from each other. And I'm going to hold down my paper right in the corner. Now what I'm going to do is bring in the stamp. So this stamp is going to be for all three of these small flowers here. So I'm going to set that down and I'm going to um, take this. So you also need this. You wanna reserve this for a template. You want these pieces. So now what I'm going to do is put my stamp down, pick it up with the platform, ink it up with my ink. I feel really unorganized, everybody. My videos are unedited, and they do contain bloopers, so bear with me on all of this. But I feel a bit unorganized for this video. Now what I did was I inked it up. I'm going to stamp on the grid paper. That shows me the location of where those are going to stamp. Then I'm going to take this piece and use it as my template. I'm going to cut this in half. You could keep it whole, but I like to cut it because I'm going to use this portion for this flower and this portion for these. So now what I have are these three flowers. I can take this and rotate it until I have equal spacing on all sides of those three flowers. Take my magnets, hold that into place. Take these little pieces, put those into place. And just like a puzzle, you want to make sure they're nice and flush and they're perfectly in place. Then what you can do is ink up your stamp again. Bring this down, put a little bit of pressure on, and there you have your stamped images. I showed you here the most time consuming one because it has the three little images, but I do that very same thing for the larger image where I put the stamp on, line it up, put that into place, and stamp that. So what I like to do is just run a lot of these through my die cutting machine, stamp them all up, and then decide my colors and then color everything in. So you would do this for all the images you wanna use on your project. So I'm going to set this aside and we'll continue on to coloring. So I mentioned that these are colored with a blends. I suggest just picking your favorite flower color. And what I've done is that's the same color cardstock that I've used. For this sample, I'm going to make both of them with the pool party as my color for my flower. I'm using Granny Apple Green for the leaf and then Daffodil Delight for the center of the flower. So there are so many ways you can use the blends. Um, there's no wrong way to do them, but I'm gonna share some of the things that I do. First, I'm gonna let you know that up until the I started playing with the Stampin' Up! blends, I did not like to color in. I never colored an image. I would color, pick this stamp set, and I would color in one color ink, and that would be it, because I was not, um, I did not like coloring in. 
the blends make it so easy. They blend so well. So what I do is I take, this is my technique for every flower I color in. I color a few petals with a light color, depending on the type of image, but Stampin' Up! has made this so easy for us because this image has all these added details. You can add your dark color on those. What I like to do is just put them, put it up a little bit on the bottom of each petal like so. That little turnover there, I will keep light. I don't add any color to additional color to that. That was with the dark. Then I take the light and then I just move the dark up a little bit. Depending on the look you want, you can move it all the way up to the top of the petal or just up a little bit to keep some light space or light color, medium color, and darker color. Then I would color in a few more petals and do the same thing. For the greenery, I will take the lightest color, and this is the light. I want to make sure I get the light, and I'll color in um, the green and the light, and it does dry a little bit darker. I'm sorry, a little bit lighter. It goes on a little bit darker, and then take the detail or the um, dark color, and I'll bring this closer to the camera here. I'll take the dark and then I'll just bring the light in again and just pull that color up a little bit. A couple things about your blends, go very, very lightly. You don't wanna hear scratching because if you're hearing scratching, you're working on the bristles, you're, you're distorting the bristle. Go super light and you're gonna keep that fine tip um, like that for a long, long time. And just go really, really light, your color is gonna flow out. If you have to go hard enough that it's scratching, to you hear that noise, that means you're, um, it's starting to dry out. You might wanna think about replacing it. And also the bullet end is perfect for stems and your more detail. But I love the blends. For the center, I take the darker of my yellow. I picked Daffodil Delight. Sometimes I do Soul Saffron and I put that in for the center. And for these little flowers here, I take the lighter color and I just put a little bit of color on that image and that's how I color them in. And this will be a sample of how it finishes it. But that's what I do and I know I love coloring. I like cut cutting a bunch of them out and they're perfect for a road trip or if you're sitting, getting a vehicle repaired at the, um, the dealership you can be coloring in. So now let me show you how I would put these together. So we're going to embellish these pieces first before we do our inside piece. What I like to do is just place those down. I do have a, a sentiment, it's from the stamp set, and I use the stylish shapes to cut that out. You can decide if you want it on the bottom or on the top. I'm gonna to put this one on the, on the bottom. Then I just lay my images down to see where I would want to place those. So what I'm going to do is kind of just look at where I want to add my greenery and where I want to add my flowers. I am going to bring in my craft pad because what I'm going to do is put adhesive behind the greenery pieces. So as I lay that down, I'm going to put my greenery pieces down first. And so I put a little bit of adhesive behind that. One thing about this, you need to make sure that everything you decorate stays within the outline of the shape. You don't want to go above that. Now what I'm going to do is take the, I have dimensionals on the back of the banner just to put this down first. So I don't put that down, my flowers down too far. And then I'm going to take this greenery piece and place this. As I mentioned, you don't want to go beyond this space here. Now I'm going to take the larger flower. I've put some dimensionals behind this already. So I can um, put that on, save a little bit of time. I have dimensionals behind all of the flowers. When I put dimensionals on, I just put them on the center, even here. So that way it, you have space to tuck them underneath where you want to tuck them underneath. I'm going to place that flower here and I 
Um, sometimes I always, once I find a, a layout that I like, I use it, but sometimes you can um, just change it up. And I'm gonna add this extra flower right here. Yeah, we'll put it right there. So there I have one of them decorated. That's going to be for this one. And now we're going to look at this one. This one is one that I wanted to reserve all those center pieces. So I'm going to go back to grabbing something I cut out ahead of time. So I have this all cut out. Now I'm going to give you a tip. Um, if you want to, um, if you're cutting this die out and all the pieces are sticking in here, a tip would be to take wax paper. Let's see if I have the wax paper here. I thought I had a piece of wax, yeah. Just take a piece of wax paper and place this between your cardstock when you cut it out and all the pieces will stay out of here and stay onto your, um, stay together like this. You will have a little layer of wax paper to peel off. What I do is I, do, I put those in my plate and then I do it the second time without wax paper and they all stay like this because what I want to do with this piece is I want to bring in the blends and color all of these greenery pieces to to be used for this so if they're all right here on this piece of cardstock then I could just color all of those in I'm going to leave the white pieces white and I want them on here well, I think the best way I found and to do that is to take the adhesive sheets. So what I've done, and let's see if I can find my piece here, is I've cut a piece of the adhesive sheet. It's three and three eighths by four and three quarters. I'm gonna put it on the back of this. So what I'm going to do is turn this over. I'm gonna peel these backing pieces off and this is going to let me put replace all of those or put all those opening pieces or put all those cutout pieces in the opening now i have adhesive on this side i can go in here and take all of these pieces and stick them right in here so what you would do is just take all of these colored pieces fill that in I'm going to keep all of these blank. All the, all the white, all the flowers I'm going to keep white. So what you would do is just go in and, and complete that. And to save some video time, I've got that done ahead of time. So you can see all the greenery pieces I colored green and put them in and all the flowers I left white. Now we have that adhesive sheet on the back. We do not, that's gonna be visible in a sense, but it's not really sturdy. We're gonna cover that up with this cutout. So we have this already cut out. By me putting that mark on my die and keeping everything straight, this should match up perfectly. My best way to adhere this piece or put adhesive on here and adhere this to that is to use the Stamparatus or you can use the um, Simply Scoring, and my Simply Scoring machine's more accessible right now, for this corner piece. Because I wanna make sure that I get this aligned perfect. So if I push this up to the wall, so any, any edges that hit first, hit first, and get that nice and snug, I can put adhesive on the back of this and put that on. You might think that I could peel this off but if I peel those off, those images inside might come with the adhesive and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to take and put more adhesive over my backing piece here. Um, now this was the top, this is the top. If I push that into the corner, lift this up so my adhesive doesn't touch until I'm in the position, then I can bring this down and then I can get those two to overlay correctly. So that will be that window image decoration. Now what I do want to do is decorate that with some flowers. And as I mentioned, I feel a little disorganized, but it's all going to come together for you here. I colored all of these ahead of time. And what I'm going to do is decorate this 
by taking these flowers. I have dimensionals behind them. Now, as I've already shared with you, this, this die only has these flowers. It doesn't have images for, or the stamp, there's no stamps for these other images, but you can substitute some of these. So I'm gonna show you how I did this. So first of all, I'm going to place all of these over the openings where they are a perfect match. And here we go, and this is one. And this one goes here. So those are a perfect match. But you can really take this rest of these and fill in, even though they're not a perfect match, by putting white on white, you're not going to really see that opening is different. And you can place all of these extra pieces to be as if they were the right flower for the right location. So I have a little flower for the smaller ones. And then I think I'm missing a flower, which I'm a little disorganized, but we'll, we'll put this together and then we will, um, I'll find it later, but I'm going to put one up here and we'll put this one right here. But I have one more that would fit that spot. And then if you wanted to add some ribbon to your card, but you don't have the right color ribbon, the blends will color your ribbon. I have the quarter inch white crinkled ribbon here. I'm going to grab my dark blend. And then what you can do is work with this on your paper, scrap paper and just color this in. You don't, it does not need too long. Are you, <laughs> let me rephrase that. It, it will dry fairly quickly. Just color that in. When you color one side, it bleeds to the other side. And then you can have some coordinating ribbon to make a bow with. So um, I hope this all kind of made sense on how I decorated my cards and how I utilize these, um, this beautiful bundle to do the decorating. So now let's go back to assembly. So we have our window, we have our card base with our window, we have the embellishment that's going to go in here. And then we have, um, we have one more piece, we need to create the mechanical piece there. So what I have ahead of time is I have those um, already cut to size. I have a PDF on my blog post. Um, in the comment section of this video, there'll be a direct link to it where you can download this to get the dimension for the card base, cut the window out, and then the dimension for this piece is nine and a half by six and three quarters, scored at four and three quarters, which will be a valley fold, and then score it at seven and one eighth, which will be a mountain fold. So I have two of those already done ahead of time. I even have this little drawing that will help you know how it actually gets assembled. So let me do this one first. So what we wanna do is adhere this back to this side and our accordion is on the right side. You're going to use your um, favorite adhesive. I'm gonna use the stamp and seal. And so we're going to place this with the accordion on the right side, I'm gonna look for equal spacing on the top and bottom, and I have a disadvantage for my view. Put that down, close the window, then adhesive is only going on this opening, or in that opening on that, that panel that's folded. Hold it up so it does not touch your adhesive. Get this window to line up first, this edge that there's no adhesive, and then let the rest fall into place and you will be able to get your window will open like so. I didn't get that on there. I'll show you a finished sample, and that would be true for this one too. So we'll just repeat that again. And we're gonna put our adhesive on the back of this. Let's see. Um, I think I'm almost running out of my seal. I have a refill right here um, if I need to. So let's get this back to the right orientation. This is our front, this is our inside base. We're gonna rotate it like this. We're going to put this equal spacing here, close this, 
and put our adhesive right here and repeat this where you are going to hold it up so it doesn't touch that panel get this section to all align with your deckled decorative edge let that fall into place and now you have your fun fold window card on my other cards what i did was i do have some of the smaller deckled inside images to fill that in let me talk a little bit more about these so here is one of these samples with flirty flamingo this is pool party this is daffodil delight another flirty flamingo a repeat of this card and the bow would go down here with a dimensional on this card what i did was i did the gold foil for my cutout and the pieces that were with this this piece i filled in on this this is crumb cake and this is ivory in the bronze colors and then I just want to share the inside of these pieces. How I did this is I maximized my gold foil by taking my dies. I cut, cut this out. I cut the very vanilla out of the next one. But before I cut the gold, I cut the inside piece of the gold, which I used for this card. And before I adhered that, I cut out another piece so now I have a small piece of gold like that. So I hope that made sense. I maximized my gold foil. It's a specialty paper. Anytime you have a specialty paper, it's best to maximize it to get your best value. So this is the five by seven fun fold window card using the cottage rose bundle. I hope you enjoyed this video and find success when you create it. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click the red box under the video, then select the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. There'll be a direct link in the comment section of this video to get you to my blog post where you'll have a PDF with a link to this video so you can duplicate this card. Thanks for stopping by. Take care and happy creating.